King of Trash is the name of the song. Adam and Eve is the album, and uh, that's from Gavin Friday, who's here with us talking about. Yeah, just talking about the album itself. You said that it deals with themes that a lot of Irish people push under the carpet. What do you mean exactly? There's one very obviously coming to my mind immediately: the abortion issue. I think anything to do with sort of sex is pushed under the carpet in this country. Uh, I think one of the people are talking about the, the abortion issue and the right to the child and all that, uh, which is fair enough. But what about women? You know, you know they're being treated like second-class citizens, as far as I'm concerned with this. And what's gone on in the last few months in this country? And basically, it is Adam and Eve. Well, in certain sense, there's a song called Saint Divine, mm -hmm. which is a, a, a tribute to a friend of mine who uh, you'd probably know if, 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 if you saw him. It was from the, the days of the beautiful people. And mm -hmm. uh, his, his sexuality was quite sort of out, out to lunch, uh, to say. And uh, he, he went over to New York, and I saw him about two years ago. I hadn't seen him in years. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's basically a drag queen now in a place called King Tut Tut's Wah Wah Hut. <laughs> and uh, he's a drag queen with a Dublin accent, which is like surreal. And uh, when I when I met him afterwards, and uh, I was talking to him, he's just like broken hearted that he can't come back to live in Dublin because he can't live the way he wants to. The fact that he's homosexual and a transvestite, and it's like F O A D. Yeah, right. So there's, mm. the, you know, but you know, you know, it's. Mm. Well, you yourself have have suffered the flings and arrows of outrageous Dubliners down through the years. Obviously, if you're going to do what you did in the Virgin Prunes, you certainly did. So what was it like? I mean, was it difficult being a Virgin Prune? Or was, did you get any sort of uh, not nice people meeting you along the street sometimes? Oh, yeah, a couple of boots in the head and that. But, I mean, I think anyone from any sort of north side area or even sort of rough south side areas gets boots in the head. And I don't really believe in doing the Bob Geldof on it, saying, oh, Jesus, it was terrible. But... Uh, I was lucky because I was in the Virgin Prunes and I could get out of Dublin, you know. I went on the Virgin Prunes from 81 to 84, 85, were touring all the time. So I, I didn't get suffocated in that way. And, uh, and actually seeing what goes on in other cities uh, gave me the com confidence to say, well, when I come back, I will wear a four-yard skirt and carry a walking stick. And if you come near me, I'll whack you. <laughs> and you did. And I did. But I got whacked more than they whacked me. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's changed, too. I mean, like, you, go, you look at, like... Uh, you know, the late 70s, early 80s, uh, a young man with dyed hair, earrings and eyeliner wasn't a, a, a thing that was taken easily. Now, there's thousands of Cure fans walking around Grafton Street, you know, on a Saturday afternoon. It's nothing if a young man puts a bit of eyeliner on. <laughs> it's nothing it's if a young thing. man puts a bit of eyeliner yeah. on. Yeah. No, I suppose you got a point there. Right? What, what is it about Gavin Friday in Dublin, do you think? Is it a love-hate thing? more so a love. I'd say the, the love out us, the hate, although, uh, you know, I think our, Ireland is going through some sort of weird puberty stage, you know, uh, it's, the end of, it's the end of an era, hopefully. Uh, I think I love this place more than I hate it, but mm. uh, I could find lots of things to hate about it, but as we all could, but I, I, I still live here, and I hopefully will. Continue. You still live here, but you've been away an awful lot lately, obviously doing the yeah, album and all yeah, that. Yeah. What kind of things have you found abroad? I mean, is it, is it, like, is, is it travel broadens the mind with Gavin Friday? It's simple as I, that. It does in one sense, but also uh, recording here is very lazy. I find when I record here, you, you end up going down the pub. And, uh, also, it's, you know, you can go home and feel safe. Uh, I think when you're making a record, you should sort of get the finger out and work. So I like actually working in... I don't like London, but I like working in London because... You can't wait to get out of it, so you work quick. Mm. Yeah. What about, like, obviously any band that's ever come out of here in the last eight years, by the second or third question, you too is mentioned, but in the last year or so, obviously, uh, like, the commitments is mentioned because it's so big and it's so, oh it's God. been so, whatever. What do you, what do you think <laughs> of the commitments, day. Gavin? I'm embarrassed about the commitments, really. I, I was just coming back a few weeks back. I was in Europe doing some press tours, and a lot of people actually think that's what Dublin's like, and it's a joke. You know, I, I find it, like, insulting. See, yeah. I don't find it that funny either, you know. Uh, I mean, I was never a Joe Cocker fan, but any white man trying to sound like a black man, a constipated black man. You know, but, and also, I, I just, this, you know, the, the niggers of, the, of Europe and all that number, it's a little... Well, there are people who might feel like that. Like, I mean, in that scene you always see on the TV of Robert Arkin saying that, you know, like, on the north side of the niggas of Dublin and all I the rest. I don't think so. I think well, I mean, just take, I mean, Roddy Doyle wrote the book. Now, if he wants to put in something that meant something to him when he was growing up in Dublin, which is soul music, 
Yeah. I mean, would you be against that? Like, I mean, like, just because you were into something else. No, they should have set in the 60s, you know. Most 18, 19 year olds are into Technotronic or, or U2 or Nirvana. They're not into something that's, I mean, I, I was never even into that. They but I mean, even if you think 60s. that might be factually wrong, which is yeah. a facetious argument, really, but I mean, like, what's wrong with it? I mean, like, what, what? there's nothing wrong with it. It's just Hollywood pap. And it's really annoying that certain people start believing this silver screen and start saying that's what the Irish are like. Big. If the book hadn't been made into a movie, if the book hadn't become huge, mm -hmm. would you be still giving out about it? Is it its No, hugeness? because I never read it. I saw, the, I saw one of his plays, Brown Bread, and I hated it before the movie came out because I thought that was Jesus as well. I just don't like Dubliners being portrayed the same way I don't like when you see those sort of uh, letter to Brezhnev numbers. I found that sort of ha 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 the Liverpudlians nudge nudge wink wink twats but they're really really funny. You know I don't like Dubliners being a uh, I think Dubliners have a lot more dignity than that. But maybe they do. But I mean, maybe like I mean, maybe you're criticising something that he wasn't trying to do. He was he was just making a funny book about something that he sort of decided right. to write coming out of his head. Yeah, it's but don't, don't ask me a question about it, and I'll tell you what I think about. It. I'm not gonna, you know. I just was in in Germany, in Holland, and they were saying, "Oh, it's a commitment. It is a Dublin. Yes, it bringing the horse up in the lift." I said, "You wouldn't even <laughs> get out of here." You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I yeah. just, they, they, they're actually thinking it's real. I mean, you know, the world's gone a bit mad anyway. People, you know, some, my mother thinks Neighbours is for real, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's an awful lot of people that do. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay, well, what about other musics then in Dublin? What do you think about, I mean, like, for instance, when you were around doing the Virgin Prunes, obviously you were very much kicking against what was ever prevalent or big at the time, mm -hmm. and you were doing something very different, right? So it was very easy for you to maybe to say, well, a lot of what's going on is not very good. Do you think a lot of what's going on is not very good now? From an Irish context? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not very impressed. Yeah. For me, I mean, I think Sinead O'Connor's probably the best thing that's come out of the country in the last few years. You know? What, musically or just as a person? And as both. A... I like her attitude, too. I mean, a bit of both. Yeah. You wouldn't think she's a bit naive? Yeah, but I like that. You wouldn't think she's incredibly naive to the point where she makes terrible mistakes? Yeah. And that's cool as well, is it? Okay, you wouldn't yeah, I mean, she, maybe, maybe make she, she, she should learn by people. now the stuff growing up in public, yeah. Maybe she should shut up. I love the fact that she uh, knocked on Mr. Reynolds' door a few weeks back. I like that. I think that's a good thing for a pop star to do. And then she should shut up a lot of the time. But I don't know. I'm a bit nervous of this sort of ping pong, uh, the Sultans of Ping and the, and the Frank and Water. A bit nervous of, ah, the funny Irish, ah, they're mad. I, li I love Cal. Carl Cochran. Yeah, I think he's great. Now, there's a man with spunk. Yeah, absolutely. And the records are great. He's probably the best thing, you know, for my taste. You yeah. see, this is it. It's for your taste. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to find that's, out... That's all, that's, that's all I can do. Is all right, my yeah. taste. Same with you, Dave. Uh, yeah, I know, but I mean, you could sort of maybe uh, do a more all-encompassing answer and start giving out hell about it for the, for the very reason of its being or the very fact that it exists, if you like. I'm getting too old to give out now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? I know. Uh, I could get very cynical in that. And when I'm drunk, you'll probably hear me spouting more. There's some great bands, uh, great guys, good attitudes. I think everyone's very, it's very incestuous. Get out of here. Get out of Ireland. M Irish music, the best music is music with bigger vision. And like, just go to London. Like, and that's what I liked about Fatima Mansions or Micro Disney. And I suppose even the Sultans of Ping and the F Frank and Walters, yeah. those guys, they're out there and fat ladies doing their own thing. And it's a lot healthier than sitting here, yeah. you know, because this is an, an incestuous little, uh, it's not the real world. What about the kind of music that was just huge there, 80, 80, 89, 90, like Spearheaded by the Water Boys and... Rag Raggletaggle, yeah. as they called it. I mean, Raggletaggle, as yeah. I suppose some journalists called it, right? What did, you, what did you think of that? Well, as Carl Cochran would say, no, 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 no danke. Yeah. So you're going to use a Cahal quote to get out of this one, are you? Nah. Have you I, I never really got, look, you know, like, the, the, the hippy-dippy thing never really... Got me. I mean, like, there's some beautiful uh, Celtic music, you know. I'm, I actually like the Chieftains, like Early Clannad, you know. Some of Van Morrison's stuff I can put up with. But, uh, <laughs> I don't, I, I, I'm just very, you know, I can uh, hear Mike Scott's over in America now. He'd probably come out with the uh, mini, Minneapolis sound now, you know. <laughs> it wouldn't put it past him. I found it a little sort of like, mm, he was sort of writing his, his history a little earlier. Like the way, uh, Terence Trent tried to make the Surreal album, you know, it backfired. It backfired in terms of sales. There was some good stuff on that second album, The Night of Fish. No, I think the single was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. 
but I don't know. I'm I just f- a bit suspicious. A bit suspicious. All right. It goes well with Guinness and dope. Does it? Oh, yeah. That's how I hear. Come on, yourself, Gavin. All right. Um, I'll uh, play another track from the album and play a break first. What'll I play, actually? In fact, we can decide during the break. Hold on. <laughs> 